Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you please take your seats at this time as the program will begin momentarily. As a junior semi independent researcher, you are expected to take responsibility for your work, take initiative and be in control of the progress of your work. This is why it is important that you know how to plan your research accordingly, taking into account availability of resources as well as the lead time and response time of your intended research activities. As with all things in life, research also never goes entirely to plan. That is why you must also ensure that your plan allows for flexibility and includes some overlap time. But how do you create a workable and realistic planning? First of all, based on your research objective and your research question, you can usually divide your research into work packages. Ensure that you do not forget to include your reporting in these packages. You also usually have a fixed deadline or time period allocated to your research. Those form the starting point in creating your planning. Next, you define any interdependencies between your work packages. With interdependencies, I mean how do the work packages interdepend on each other. In project management, four types of interdependencies are defined. Start to start. The preceding activity must begin before the next activity can begin. Finish to start. The preceding activity must end before the next activity can begin. Start to finish. The preceding activity must begin before the next activity can end. And finish to finish. The preceding activity must end before the next activity can end. Once you have defined the interdependencies on a work package level, zoom in on each work package and define deliverables per work packages and identify their interdependencies. When looking at activities, also take into account any iterations, as also seen in the scientific method. For instance, in your methods, design or when you're coding, you will more than likely go through iterations after trialing. Try and preempt those iterations and include them in your list of activities. Now, assign an appropriate amount of time to each activity. Do it at least at the level of days. Don't zoom in any further than that. If you're unsure how long an activity will last, ask your colleagues or other more experienced researchers. Next, identify any major milestones in your research, such as deadline and review moments. Also, list all your non-workable days. If you now were to plot all of these on the, with on the horizontal axis the time frame of your research and on the vertical axis all your activities, you'll get a nice overview in time of your intended research. The more experienced planners among you will now probably think, did we not just create a Gantt chart? This is indeed the underlying theory of a Gantt chart, which is a type of bar chart that represents a project schedule. Gantt charts are named after its inventor, Henry Gantt, who created those in the early part of the 20th century. By plotting the length of each task as a bar, a graphical representation was created. In Gantt charts, the level of completion of a task is often indicated by shading the completed percentage of a task. You can create Gantt charts in a very simplified form in Microsoft Excel, but most people use professional project management software these days, such as Microsoft Project, InstaGantt, TeamGantt or Gantt Project. The overview you now get will allow you to look at the feasibility of your research and likely make adjustments to ensure you can finish your project on time. Finally, the Gantt chart is not only useful when planning your research, but it's also of great use during your research to keep track of your progress and foresee bottlenecks and make adjustments where necessary. <laughs>